and welcome to Rugby World Cup on Ireland, the show that looks at the global tournament in France through a South Pacific lens featuring Pacific rugby heroes from this part of the world. And what a bunch of legends we have on the show today, introducing, of course, my co-host, a man who, since this show has began, has attracted a legion of fans across the globe, Manu Samoa legend Tui Langi, Alessana Tui Langi. Talofa. Uh, joining us is the son of Tongan legend Malakai Alatini. His three brothers have played for Tonga while he himself was a loyal servant of New Zealand rugby, a stalwart for the Highlanders and the Hurricanes. They're playing stint in Japan in a distinguished career that included 17 tests for the All Blacks. That's the electrifying Peter Alatini. Yeah. Well, what an intro. <laughs> Malolele. Thank you so much, Oscar. Pleasure, gentlemen. And a man who could accurately be described as the Rolls Royce of fullbacks. The Paikakariki Express, whose running style was sheer poetry, a star for Wellington and the Hurricane, 60 tests for the All Blacks, and a highlight reel of stunning tries that are still required viewing for rugby heads everywhere. It's the legend, Christian Cullen. Hello, boys. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, welcome. Lovely to have you in the islands. So beautiful to be here, Oscar. How can you not complain? Um, back here in Samoa, behind the backdrop that uh, behind us is so beautiful, but also with the, the two legends. Uh, my favourite Manu Samoa of all time, obviously. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so kind, one of the best fullbacks, uh, <laughs> Christian Cullen. So, yeah, Milo for having us. Coming up, we will preview two cracking semi finals that we are in store for and a very special story of Christian visiting a village just up the road from here where his Samoan heritage is from. But first, let's review the quarter uh, final action from this weekend, starting with one of our Pacific teams that featured New Zealand up against Ireland. Uh, Tui Lange, you actually tipped the All Blacks to win this one. What a game. Yes, of course. What a cracking <laughs> game, you know. I always support the, the team from, uh, from, from, the, from the South. So I'm very happy for All Blacks uh, to win this game. Were you surprised by what happened? No, I wasn't. No, not really, because uh, I still before Ireland played a good, uh, good rugby, but All Blacks, when they play the game, they're going to yeah. win. Kali, we saw at the TAB, the All Blacks were ac the actual underdogs. I can't remember the last time that happened. Did you have any doubts? Oh, there's always doubts, but uh, you've got a belief in them. And <clears throat> I think I said at the start of the tournament, the All Blacks are usually the ones that people are chasing. So I like the fact that we went to France and we were chasing Ireland, we were chasing France. So this game, hey, it could have gone either way because that's how close they are. But I think world rugby's been waiting for a game like this and I think France has delivered in, in the crowds and the stadiums. And that's, that quarter final was, uh, was a game where you go on the edge of your seat to the, to the 80th, 82nd minute, like unreal game. Yeah, yeah, you got to feel for Ireland. Uh, number one team coming in. Yeah. <laughs> they had not just high hopes, but they actually yeah. had belief. You could see well, it on their devastated uh, players after. Well, do you know what? I mean, I, I know how they feel. In 99, when we lost to France, and we had that belief, and it's not a bad thing. It's not that we shouldn't lose, but afterwards you go, man, how did that happen? Yeah. And I think Ireland was so dominant and been such a great side. You could see Sexton and some of those guys after the game. Like, I don't know, it's going to take a while to get over it for, the, for those boys. Like, seriously, it was a big blow to them. The best Ireland team ever, everyone's saying, Peter. Um, but a number of senior All Blacks really stood up. Who, who impressed you? I think, you know, you, Sam Kane, I think everyone's had, had his doubters, and I think he really shut that down with his performance. Artie Savile was huge again, obviously man of the match. But just the, I think the, the, the cool thing about this group was they finally, you could see, I suppose, what they've been building towards. Again, everyone was doubting them. Everyone had, had written them off, had said that Ireland will be the team to beat. And, 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 you know, uh, got on them because they had performed outstandingly leading into the World Cup. But I suppose when it comes to the World Cup, and, and we know when it comes to one-off games, the team on the day, the, the decision-making that we made on the field was, was close to, to near, you know, a, a top performance, and, and we got the result out of it. Yeah. Uh, and now to Argentina versus Wales. Tui Lange, you also tipped this result. Um, Wales were, were leading for all of the first half, but in the end, was, was it Argentina's power game that just got them through? I think, uh, you know, going into this, uh, in this kind of game, you have to do everything right. You know, you have to put everything there. You know, I know Argentina with the physical game. My, Wales, they were come out very strong in the first half, and Argentina just, just hold on to the ball and mm. just uh, create their spaces, and then uh, we saw the end. They yeah. scored a, a very uh, good try and a winning try. Peter, the, uh, 
Wales would have been confident eh, going through their pool undefeated, but in a World Cup, that doesn't really mean Jack. Hey, sometimes. I think you've just got to look at the performances and, and leading into that game he probably would have picked Argentina only for the fact that I mean Wales only for the fact that Argentina wasn't convincing you know they weren't playing as, as well as we know they can play yep. but again funny thing when pressure is put on and, and it's a different stake that's that's involved and, and then obviously the, the class coaching group of um, in, in Argentina that they, they come up with a plan to Checker yeah, and yeah. Uh, Kidwell so you know, like, there's, there's no surprising. I think it's, it's, it's great that we've got another Southern Hemisphere team that's, yes. that's, that's come through that we'll have to face in the next round. But, um, but yeah, you never discount the Argies. Again, they've been here and they've done it. You know, there's a bit of experience there. And, and, and they the play Tier 1 Nations all the time now. That's they, right. Yeah, they did it that's used right. to before. So, yeah. Kelly, um, at the last World Cup, Wales made the semis. They only went down by three points to the eventual champions, South Africa. What do you reckon Wales has to do to be a you know, to be a genuine world power like Ireland have done? Yeah, well, Gatlin's obviously come back in and uh, and changed um, some of their stuff. They just have to keep on doing what they're doing. They had a pr pretty good World Cup. Of, well, they classes as a success, I suppose, as getting to a semi and a final. But all we all know, like whatever rank or whatever the TAB or the betting people tell when you go into a World Cup, favourites and it doesn't matter. Like the best teams don't necessarily win. World Cups and World Cup games, you need a bit of luck and mm. you know whether it's a referee's call or, or something like that but I know Argentina are a good side, they've shown the All Blacks how good they are when they beat us. So Wales are building, they just have to wait another four years like, uh, <laughs> like Australia and some of these other teams. <laughs> four more years, oh my lord. Sorry Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and now to uh, Fiji's quarter final against England, the flying Fijians carrying the hopes of the three island nations that this show is dedicated to. Tui Lange, you were right again. Um, Manu had another solid game, but what a comeback from Fiji, eh? But it just wasn't quite enough in the end. Yeah, you know, uh, we have to show some uh, huge respect for the Fijian boys. You know, uh, they, they all make us proud for our small nations. But uh, as, as again, they show some passion of the game. They play with their hearts, play the flair for, uh, for the people and their country. But uh, that when a man score, that's right, that's the set tone of the game. Yeah. You know, as, as a mindset, going into the strong team like this, all about points. Once you get that point in the first five, ten minutes, yeah. and then you all start building from there. You because can't because always win by comeback, eh? Come yes, back, yeah. yes. You can't always string them together. Mm. I, I just think Fiji are a great side when they're, when they're chasing and they're underdogs. I think when they're favourites, as we've seen, <laughs> they play really, really well against Wales and Australia. And then, you know, those two games... Portugal one of them, they, they, yeah, they should have won. Yeah. Like, and so in this game, they're obviously the underdogs, and uh, then they got back to 24 all, and then they almost like shut shop, mm. which I don't know. We see uh, my man here with his. Uh, <laughs> hey, here we go. <laughs> Let's go, England. <laughs> <laughs> but but when they get to the semis, like they're going to face, they'll they'll face something different because mm. they haven't Definitely. faced any of the top five teams through this World Cup, so. That's going to be a, a massive uh, intensity um, uplift for them. So yeah, we'll see. Tough. Yeah, yeah. Amazing effort from the Fiji. Second quarter final they've made, and in the professional era, um, surely there must be part of the rugby championship after 2025, which is when the current iteration expires. Yeah. Well, they just—it's like probably all the island nations. They just need to play bigger games. I don't know about the grassroots stuff, but the, the top end stuff. And it's hard because a lot of the good players are playing overseas, so to get them all together and in the same rugby window as, as everybody else, it's tough. But we can see whether it's Samoa or Tonga, like when they go good, they, they're, they're good sides. And Fiji, yep, they've had a boost from being in the, um, in the Super Rugby comp, and you can see the benefits of that now, so... Yeah. To Ilangi, it'd be great to see Mano Samoa. Eh? Uh, Fiji lead the way, showing what's possible. It'd be great to see Mano Samoa get up there as well. It would be it would really, uh, really good for, for the island boys to get there in the championship competition. As we see, we, we're good players. You know, we're building all the players for around the country, but why not build a team for us, for, for, the, for the small nation yeah. like us? So it would be a really, really great opportunity if we had. Uh, and now to the hosts, oh my gosh, uh, France versus South Africa. Um, Peter, what was your assessment of this game? Well, what a game. I mean, 
I mean, their first half tit for tat in terms of, you know, try a piece, going back and forth. Um, but I think it was that second half where we really saw the grind between the two teams. What was really impressive, and I think I compare it to, to where Fiji probably went down. They went away from attacking, keep attacking that, that ball, whereas you saw France coming to the end. They knew there was still a point behind. They were on their line. They didn't stop uh, attacking, and, and that's probably a prowess. Um, and the Springboks being really clinical at that time with their defence, which managed to, to do that last little um, you know, turnover to, to actually win the game. But at the end, the blockies, the Springboks held tight yeah. and got through the host. So. Yeah. To Elangi, this is the only one you got wrong. You yes. picked France. What happened? Ah. What happened, do you reckon? <laughs> I feel sorry for the blue team. So. Yeah. But, uh, they've been great hosts. It's such a shame to see really them. They've been a really good team, as I said last time. But it's, it's not their day. But uh, very uh, respect South African guys. The last minute uh, when France was attacking, they were dying for that penalty. And then comes down to a discipline. Mm. You know, they were defending really well. Discipline. Once that offside line, so it away penalty. But they will keep their feet on the line and they'll keep their, their defence very good. Yeah, well, what another great, awesome game. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> on the edge of your seat. Yeah, I feel sorry for, the, uh, for France and, and all the people in the stadium because, man, what an atmosphere. But, you know, South Africa, I think a lot of people questioned their squad when they, they came in and they, they changed things up with a 7-1 and the people go, man, what are they doing? But, man, they know what they're doing. Andre Pollard, you know, he's just coming to the squad and they win by one point and he, he kicks a goal from 50. I don't know if Faf de Klerk could have done that. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah I mean, what a core Russi Rasmus. He's, uh, you see him in the, in the box, he's a clever man. <laughs> and they've, they've done what they needed to do. But once again, like the All Blacks uh, Island, it could have gone, it could have gone either way. Like these are worthy of semi-final yeah. uh, games. Like, yeah. Oh, great stuff. Well, just four remain at the Rugby World Cup. Uh, we'll preview the semi-final soon. But first, uh, now I remember when Christian Cullen was carving up uh, the Rugby World at Will, and we heard a rumour that he had some Samoan heritage. We were stoked, but we weren't sure if it was true, because Samoans, we think everybody's Samoan. <laughs> Elvis, Bruce Lee, <laughs> Muhammad Ali, but it's true. It's absolutely true, and on this trip, just up the road from where we're filming here at the beautiful Sinale, uh, Kali got to make a special trip to his village of Siumu. Let's take a look. See our place, our land. Welcome to Eastern Kali and family. <laughs> to your family. Perfect. Uh, probably here when I was 1920, I came here. So, man, a lot different, a lot going on, but good to be back. Good to see uh, nephew and niece here, which obviously, you know, haven't seen them for a long time. So, yeah, it's awesome. The last time I was here was 20 years ago. I know, so, I know you came on a coconut tree. Yeah, he, might be a, he, he might be a better climber than me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the old man, he was quite big on us, you know, coming to Siemu and, and seeing, you know, the great great grandparents where they are buried and where they, where they rest now. So inside this house, so we are the foreign here. You see the, the photos on the wall and the pictures, and there's a photo of me on the wall. Uh, gee, what was that when I was, that was like a New Zealand Sevens photo, which is. 24, 25 years ago when I was 18, so uh, on the wall with a lot of the other family members. So yeah, I mean, hey, pretty special, and it's just good to see that the lines, which I've obviously I've never really known. You know, you ask Dad and and a few aunties about it, but you don't really find out the the true uh, the depth. So it's good to find a bit more about it today. Cole's only 15 now, so it's good to bring he him here, and he can start to learn about it. He's got a bit of a bit of an idea, and he can go home and uh, and tell us. His three other siblings, uh, you know, what he's uh, what he's done and uh, what he's learned over here, which is which is great. I've got some pig over there. Yeah, pig, do. yeah. Here we go. Yeah. That's some way. They say, you know, whenever you come here now, this is this is your home as well, which is, you know, it just, just sort of blows you away. So it's um, yeah. I mean, I look forward to coming back with with the rest of the kids and the and the wife, and and then you just know that you're going to feel welcomed, you know. <laughs> You know what, Oscar? Yeah. Now I believe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you saw more. You know, when, yeah. when, 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 when I heard the rumours, you know, as Alan does, yeah. when I was young, I watched uh, Triple H. Yeah. And they say Triple H is Samoan as well. <laughs> <laughs> the wrestler. The wrestler, yeah. 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 So H. now I believe the great Christian Garland is a true Samoan. Yes. <laughs> nice. And uh, that was a touching moment, uh, Christian. Now you have to come and do a Matai title. Oh. 
It's not, it's not yeah. that, that expensive. It's only 10,000 <laughs> <laughs> Next year. Next year. <laughs> Next year. All right, it's uh, preview time. Two amazing semi finals to come. Let's start with England and South Africa. Uh, oh my gosh, Tuilanga, your family will be represented. Uh, oh. How is Manu feeling? Well, it's going to be a tough game for England. You know, yeah. uh, number two in the world, South Africa. We saw it how they play. They go right to the edge of the game, right to the last minute. But, uh, you know, I think uh, England will, uh, will look really, really close to this game and yeah. how they play the South African boys because they're a really physical game. Yeah. They're, they're a physical team, you know. It's going to be tough for England. Yeah. Do and, you think uh, of course, the family will be behind England. <laughs> They'll be behind England, but what does your rugby head say? I'll say England. Oh, oh okay. family first. All right, family first. all right, all right, Peter. Uh, look, I think the way I've seen England play, uh, I think the, the two different teams, different intensities. I think South Africa will probably go in as favourites, but we've seen what happens to favourites in this competition. So, but I just think they're a bit more clinical. I think they're. They've got a little bit more across the park in terms of uh, game breakers compared to, to England. Look, England's controlled their game against Fiji for 60 minutes and they look really good. Mm. But with a 10 minute period, Fiji managed to get back to 24 all. So they can't, you know, they go sleep against a team like South Africa, they'll, they'll definitely pay the price for that. And so for me in this game, I think South Africa will get up, but it'll be close. Yeah, it'll be close. Yeah, you're picking South Africa, Cody? Yeah. yeah, I mean, oh, it's just a really hard to, one to pick. It's, it's hard to know what's. What's best when you're going into these big games? Is it best to be like England where they've had some, some easier games against tier two nations? Or is it best to go in like South Africa that are battle hardened and have had a number of tough games through the comp? Uh, but I mean, my, if I was uh, going to put money on it, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on, uh, but, Ooh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'd, I'd pick South Africa after watching them. Like, I mean, I just, yeah, but once again, semi finals. Whether you're a favourite or, or the underdog, I think they can go either way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you rung Manu yet? What's the, uh, what's the feeling in the camp? Any inside knowledge you can give us? Uh, I haven't spoke to him yet. You know, I'll just let him have that moment after this big game. You know, uh, maybe later on, as yeah. I'll uh, give him a call and see if he's okay. Yeah. And, uh, but it's great too, because a little piece of Samoa will be playing in the game, even if it's for England. Oh wow, <laughs> you know, Fiji is out now, <laughs> so they're all going to go for one side more yeah, against the whole of the, the south, south, you know, yep. but uh, nice you know, like uh, Colin say, anything could happen yeah. in this kind of games, you know, uh, it's a semi-final, you have to put everything there. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's no tomorrow, right? like, you know, the boys will be, be fizzing to be in a semi-final, I think that's, that's, a, that's the first part, you embrace what's coming to you in a semi, you're like a one step away from a final, so you, you know, you can't look too far, but that's how close you are. So I think all the players uh, will be stoked to be in the position they are. Um, and Manu, man, he makes a huge difference when he gets the ball in hand. Like he was, the you try he scored. Use it more, right? You've got to give him the ball more, yeah. I, I felt that, like the, the first hit he made up, he got them straight over the line, quick ball, they're around the corner, and then his try, he came from the open, back to the blind, one on one with Manu, come on. But that's kind of, I suppose, where England's got to be sharp because we know that South Africa come in and drones. It's just not one tackler. There's mm. two or three of them, and they're really challenged that collision area. Um, so, so that's where England's just got to be smart. The kicking strategy will have to be smart, and then points on offer. I suppose as we've seen, um, that could be the telling of the game if, yeah. if they don't know. You seem to won't be as high scoring as the quarterfinals were, eh? Well, I didn't think they. I thought that both teams were shut, you know, like Ireland, New Zealand, but I mean, tries, well, five tries, they're all scored by Kiwis. <laughs> yeah. Even the Irish tries. <laughs> 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 but, but I mean, I reckon that's good because they're, they're such good attacking sides and even how good defensively they are, it just shows you how good the attack is because both, I mean, even in the other, th this game, like, we were coming over on the van here and you were going 7-0. 7 all, 14 7, <laughs> 14 all. Yeah. I was like, far out, that's uh, awesome. It's good, to, yeah. it's good that teams are still throwing and scoring tries, yeah. even though they're defensive, they're really good. Uh, and now we come to our in memoriam part of the show where we uh, remember a Pacific rugby hero who has passed from this world, but never from our hearts and our memories. Today, it's a man who's always in discussion where people um, talk about who was the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Um, today, we remember Jonah Lomu. Uh, Tui Langi, there was a lot about 
you know, when you came along, everyone was like, yes, yeah, Samoa's got its Jonah too. He must have, uh, he must have inspired you as well as a player. Uh, I watch every game. Yeah. I watch every uh, little, every games of uh, Jonah Lomu because the guy that changed the face of the rugby is the icon of the game now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's such a big man, fast and good fit, you know. I expire him all my career. Yeah, awesome. Peter, I mean, amazing to have you and Kali on the show when we talk about Jonah, because you, you played in the same back lines. Memories of the big men? Absolutely. Look, we grew up, I uh, you know, grew up with him. He was, unfortunately, he was Mangere 275. He should have been Otara 274. <laughs> yeah, Otara 274, yep. But we grew up and being Methodists, we always see each other at church. But then the beauty of, uh, beautiful thing about sport is how you come together. And me, Kali, and, and, and Jonah were fortunate enough to play schoolboys, New Zealand schoolboys together. Amazing. Um, and then obviously again, to be, to be able to play All Blacks with the brother. Um, look, he's unique. He, he took our game from what it was to, to a level of um, stardom as such, you know, the first superstar in the game. But yet so humble and, and always, you know, when, when he got a quiet time with Jonah, besides him playing his music and got lollies everywhere and McDonald's and whatever. <laughs> He was just such a such a you know gentle giant, and always wanted to have that moment with his boys and just chill. And and um, and you know that was the hardest thing for him probably to deal with because he became so famous that everyone wanted a piece of him. But we you know every day goes by, we still miss the brother, especially when it comes to World Cups and we see his highlights still bumping off everyone <laughs> left, right, and centre. But yeah, yeah I look at our, our memories with him and obviously his uh, mum happy and his family and everyone. Yeah. And, mm. Kelly, oh. I'd Special, like I honestly say, I don't think there will ever be another guy like Jonah, like on the rugby field. Like, I mean, and I was pretty lucky. I wasn't lucky in '96 when he was playing for the Blues and we were with the Hurricanes. But I played against Jonah twice, and one was at schoolboy stuff, and the other one was uh, with the Hurricanes with the Blues. And then, then he decided to come to Wellington. I was like, my man. Yeah. <laughs> so then I got to play with him, and I always say I had the best seat in the house. You know, I had, I had boys in front of me like Allah, but we had Jonah, we had Tana, we had Alama, and I was fullback, so best seat in the house. And you knew Jonah, I mean, I scored a lot of tries off the back of Jonah, and you knew when he'd get the ball, he would bang three, four, five players, and you just had to run a nice <laughs> little line. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm incredibly um, happy and proud that I got to play, I play with him, because, yeah, I honestly say there'll be, I don't think there'll ever be another guy like him. A proud son of Tonga in South Auckland, he had a huge impact on the game, uh, especially just as the game was turning professional. Played for counties Monaco, the Blues, the Chiefs and the Hurricanes. Also had stints in Wales and France. Played 73 tests for the All Blacks, scoring 43 tries. Each one was awesome. Uh, had his own PlayStation game, his own burger at McDonald's. The first rugby player to rock headphones as part of his pre-game ritual. Now they all do it. <laughs> Uh, and as Peter said, the first true global superstar of the game for our In Memoriam this week, we remember the GOAT, Jonah Lomu. Danger here, Cullen flips on to Lomu. Lomu steps outside. Cuts inside. He's still not down. He's over! And Lomu! Oh, I don't believe that. There must have been six Frenchmen trying to drag him down. OK, now it's time to look forward to our second semi-final. It's our last remaining Pacific team, New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Go the All Blacks uh, versus Argentina. Oh, are, you, are you with them as well? <laughs> uh, now that Manu Samoan <laughs> had been knocked out in Fiji and Tonga. Um, how do you see this one going down, Tuilangi? Uh, after what they said, go for uh, the spring box. Now I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I'll go for my old blacks, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, I always uh, support them. They're like, uh, all the, the island boys there, you have to support them all the way. Yeah, yeah. let's go all blacks. Yeah. Argentina, the only team in the final four to have not won the tournament, but like you were saying with World Cups, right? Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I don't, the all blacks won't take the foot off the throat uh, this week. They'll prepare because they know if they don't and they don't get things right that this team can beat them because they've done it before. So preparation, they won't take it for granted, they won't take it lightly and they'll be ready because we've seen they were ready. I sent an interview of Aaron Smith before this game against Ireland and just you could see we've done everything we could possibly do to prepare for this game and they'll do the same for this one. Yeah. Peter? I'm just so happy for them because I know that, you know, like when before they left there was definitely doubts and, and that was just through the results and what we've seen, but you know, 
I suppose we've been in their shoes. We know what it's like when, when either they're supporting you or not. Um, that how much tighter you have to become, you know, as a group, as a team, to really, you know, to form their goal. And I was just so so proud of them yesterday when they when they did do it, uh, got the result against Ireland. Um, to see that you know guys like Aaron Smith, the guys that have put in the yards and times, Whitelock, and you know the boys that have been there year in year out and have gone through the up and downs. That of the experience last year. really counted, eh? Absolutely. And that. Yeah, well, Sammy Whitelock coming on, getting the one. turnover. Yeah, yeah, unreal. So yeah, so those those things all count for, for the boys going through. And yeah, like I, I agree with Kelly, they won't take the foot off knowing what Argentina can do. But yeah. but now, I reckon we've got a new kind of create new confidence going into this game that we can you know really add on on the performance we've done. I was always a fuzzy fan, uh, <laughs> and so Same. all these people that doubted it must be feeling stink about it. They must now. feel stink. Hey, those guys. Yeah, I'm one of them. Fuzzy's he's the man. He's the man. <laughs> But how good would it be for him, yeah, just sure. personally? Yeah. Like all the stuff that people have, papers and media and everyone's been on his back, but how good would it be go, you guys fired the World Cup winning coach, see you later. Yeah. Like, well, good for his family too, like, yeah. you know, like the, the attacks, you can have it on the games, but when it, you know, when it gets a little bit personal, that's a bit, bit different. So yeah. happy for Fawzi to get through, get it done. Yeah. yeah. And you're picking the All Blacks. Of course, of yes. course. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, uh, well, that's our show. Uh, thank you, brothers, for your presence and your knowledge and your considerable mana that you bring to our show. Uh, Kali and Peter, thanks. Awesome hanging out with you guys and have a safe trip home. Mala, mala. Cheers. Thanks for having us. And uh, to Ilangi, we look forward to seeing you again next week, which will be our final episode. We'll be coming to you from the big island of Savai'i, where Yee! Tuilangi is from. Yeah. And uh, our final show will feature Savai, Sir Michael Jones and Manu Samoa head coach, Valvasa Manea Selala. Mapusua. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the semi finals. Take care of yourselves and each other. And we'll see you next week for Rugby World Cup on Ireland from right here in beautiful Samoa. That's a bit higher than you think, Cole. So easy. <laughs> you and my dad is first cousin? Yeah. Smith, you is my uncle. I'm your uncle. Yeah. <laughs> best fish in Calais is the best wind in all blacks. I got some poor tape all over there. Got everything. See how big that is? Let's go all the way down there. Okay, uh, let's go back. Yeah. <laughs>